Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to be taking a look at the basic sign function. So in your notes, please put down today's subtitle, which is basic sign function. The format of the basic sign function is very easily written as y equals the sine of x, where x tends to be in radians in most math classrooms. However, it doesn't prevent anyone from drawing the graph if x was in degrees but we'll be sticking with radians. As with any new graph, let's take a look at some of the coordinates for this graph through a table of values. So please take a moment to prepare the following table of values in your notebook. Go ahead, pause the video, and prepare it now. With your table of values ready to go, let's talk about it first before we graph it. If you're watching this video, this probably means that you're new to the sine function and this probably also means that you're new to the way the x-axis, or the independent variable, is calibrated. Although the x-axis is calibrated in radians, this doesn't change your rules of graphing, meaning that for the x-axis, we have to pick a nice interval to jump by. And in this case, I have chosen to jump the x-axis by every pi over 4 radians. You will find that as you gain more experience with the sine function, it may occur that when you're drawing a graph, you may have to choose an interval for the x-axis, such as jumping by every pi over 3, or pi over 2, or virtually any pattern in terms of radians. Next, let's determine the y-coordinates for each of these following angles that I've given to you. Keep in mind that if you're watching this video, then you should already know that sine of an angle represents the y value of the trig point that belongs to that particular angle. So in your trig circle, you're looking or focusing your eyes on the y coordinates. Let's begin. Using a trig circle, find sine of 0. That's a very easy one to find and you'll determine that the y value of the trig point belonging to angle 0 is 0. Next, locate the angle pi over 4 in your trig circle. Sine of pi over 4, focusing on the y value of the trig point belonging to pi over 4, you will find that it is root 2 over 2. Next, locate the angle pi over 2 on your trig circle you will find that sine of pi over 2, which corresponds to the y-coordinate, is equal to 1. Continuing this manner, please locate the rest of the angles on your trig circle and fill in the y-coordinates for each of these angles. For 3 pi over 4, you will find that sine of 3 pi over 4 is equal to root 2 over 2. For the angle pi, you will find that the y-value is 0. For the angle of 5 pi over 4, you will find that that corresponds to the y-coordinate of negative root 2 over 2. For the angle of 3 pi over 2, you will find that the y-value corresponds to negative 1. For the angle of 7 pi over 4, you will find that the y-value corresponds to negative root 2 over 2. And finally, after one full turn around the circle, we are back at 2 pi, which is 360 degrees. Obviously, the y-coordinate is 0. No pun intended, we basically come back full circle. If we continue past 2 pi radians, then we are in fact going around the circle again. And it's safe to conclude that therefore, another cycle of this graph will begin. With our table values filled in, we are ready to draw this graph. In order to accommodate all our coordinates, you will need a Cartesian plane that's about this size. Now, before you prepare your Cartesian plane, I'd like to note a couple of things. First, the highest and the lowest y-coordinates are 1 and negative 1. You see that from the table of values. Nothing will go beyond 1 or negative 1. Second, I'd like to point out the x-axis. Remember that the x-axis is calibrated in radians. And, for this example, I've chosen a pattern of every pi over 4 radians. So, as with any graph, please space them out 
nicely. Go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your Cartesian plane now. Let's put down our coordinates. First, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is power 4, y is root 2 over 2. Almost 3 quarters of the way to the y coordinate of 1. Next, when x is power over 2, y is 1. When x is 3 pi over 4, it goes back down to root 2 over 2. When x is pi, it goes back down to 0. When x is 5 pi over 4, it goes down to negative root 2 over 2, which is around negative 0.7. When x is 3 pi over 2, the y value goes down further to negative 1. When x is 7 pi over 4, it starts going back up to a value of negative root 2 over 2. And finally, after one turn around the full circle, we are at x equals 2 pi, which gives us a y value of 0. You should be able to connect all these points with a, with a nice, gentle wave that looks something like that. Please show that this wave continues forever as long as we keep going around the circle. I'd like you to show the beginning of the next cycle over here, and to show the end of the previous cycle, which occurred over here. I would like you to further identify two parts of this graph. The first part is the part of the graph that is highlighted in green. That is the part that repeats itself, and you should have already known prior to watching this video that the part that repeats itself is called the cycle. I'd like to clearly identify that as being one cycle of this sine graph. The second part of the graph that I would like you to clearly identify is the following. The length of that line is known as the amplitude. The amplitude of a sine function is defined as half of the distance between the highest and the lowest points of the graph. Some teachers may also define it as the distance from the horizontal axis of symmetry to the highest or to the lowest point on the graph. In the case of this basic sine function, the amplitude is equal to 1. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to the basic sine function.